Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Media Snack Meets. My guest for this episode is Samuel Roof, who is the Global Media Director of Bayer. Hi, guys. Hello, gentlemen. Where are you? There you are. Welcome to Media Snack Meets, where we get to meet the individuals and organizations doing great work to inspire success and drive change through the global media and marketing industry. Because the best are short on time, we ask just six questions in 15 minutes. We get to learn what is behind the success, what it takes to make change in the industry, and what the rest of us can learn from that experience. Please subscribe to get alerts of all upcoming guest episodes. Hey, Sam. Hey, Tom. Good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's great to be on the show. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan. I've watched quite a few episodes myself. So Good. Good to see. Um, and you, as you pointed out just prior to the episode, I, I say Bayer now that I've been in America for a few years, but in Europe, people call the firm Bayer, right? Yeah. So that's uh, why I try to adapt to the pronunciation of the audience. So with Americans, it's Bayer. With everyone else, pretty much, it's Bayer. So. Yeah. There you go. So now we know. Correct myself. It wasn't until I said it I realized that I used to say Bayer, and now I've been here. I say Bayer because everybody says Bayer. Um, anyway, thanks so much for joining us. So we're going to kick off. You see, you know the format because you've seen it before. So let's just um, kick off. So uh, for those that don't know you, Sam, so just explain what you do um, and your role at Bayer and Bayer, and also something in your career that you're the most proud of, work that you've done either in this current role or previously? Right. So what I do is I get to shape the global media strategy for Bayer Consumer Health um, globally and identify best practices across markets um, and try to scale them and try to find opportunities for innovation as well, working with our key markets and regions. Um, as well as leading the media agency partnership. So we work with Mediacom uh, globally and uh, key partners like like Google. So I get to do a little bit of um, focus on, on the now and optimizing uh, best practices and uh, you know trying to get the best out of our media dollars. At the same time, trying to anticipate what's next. And we are on a data-driven marketing transformation journey. So with precision marketing, with other uh, components in automation, AI, and so on, together with uh, a team here uh, in Basel, Switzerland, uh, really trying to anticipate what's next in order to be the best in, in consumer health. Uh, and to answer the second part of your question, uh, what am I most proud of is um, I think when I look back uh, at um, our organization now versus two years ago when I joined a little over two years ago and um, and actually Thomas who uh, you know very well and says hi yeah hi Thomas um, uh, told me just earlier before uh, this meeting that um, I wouldn't recognize uh, the organization um, you know versus what it is now in terms of media capabilities media excellence really trying to lead, uh, you know, our consumer health industry. And um, I would say it's a story of uh, media transformation. So yeah. we've been on a digital transformation program, which goes, you know, well beyond media. But on the media side as well, there there has been a media transformation, you know, starting with the pitch and everything that we've accomplished with the, uh, the new team in place and the acceleration of, um, best practices and innovation. I, I think I'm really proud of the work the team has done. Um, great, great. Good. Yeah, I know it's from you and Thomas, it's been quite a journey uh, the last few years. So congratulations on that. And if anybody watching this, you want to go back and just listen to that description of what a global media director does or should do, I think that's pretty close to a good dictionary definition. I love the idea of you you obsess about what's what's now. You get that, you know, optimize that. And then always be looking at what's next, because as we all know, things just changing so 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 much. So you have to dedicate such a big part of your time to anticipating and leading the business into what's next. So I love that. Thank you. So maybe that leads us to the next question, then Sam. So for you, best thing about 
working in media? Well, the best thing is also the biggest challenge, I think. It's the evolving media landscape and the, the speed of the evolution and how it gets more fragmented, more complex every year to some extent when you think of the number of players, the number of relationships also you have to manage and the, the complexities in the you know, ad tech business, for example, that we're trying to simplify for our organization. Yep. It, it makes it really interesting, but it's it's a huge challenge. You know, you have to keep up like the learning constantly. And, you know, social media is changing every month and there's always um, something new to, to learn. And uh, being a lifelong learner myself, I really enjoy that part. Uh, so that's one. And then I would say like uh, also meeting with lots of people, external partners, uh agency partners and media owners uh ad tech founders you know i have had such fantastic conversations and and, and learnings to those people yeah that's excellent i mean it's another it's another great example of just the breadth of the media director role i mean if, if you want it to be i mean you can, it can span lots of different adjacent functions and and you're not like the old days where you maybe just dealt with one you know, media planning and buying agency, those, those days are long gone. Um, it does bring its challenges. What, what, what to you, there's a lot of challenges, but what to you in your role in this company do you think is, presents the biggest challenge that, you're, that you guys are discussing at the moment? Um, I think there's more and more accountability for um, ROI and, um, you know, proving that media is delivering business value and business impact. Yeah. Um, and I think it's rather new um, that we are really compelled to um, bring evidence of the value that media is delivering. And it's delivering tremendous value. Um, but somehow, you know, in the past, we were like, kind of, trust me, you know, it's it's building the business. <laughs> um, but uh, now it's it's a little bit more um, fact based and you know data based and uh, and because of that, so the challenge to bring this uh, ROI focus and and business impact uh, impact uh, narrative is a risk to have a little bit of um, short term focus on what is more easily measurable, uh, what drives also higher short-term ROI versus the brand building type of activities that we know uh, will build a business over time and will be more difficult to measure. So yeah. I think that is probably to me the biggest challenge. That's really interesting. Good. Well, we'll talk next year then about see how, how, you, how far you've progressed on that because I think everyone's chasing that same dream, aren't they? Um, okay, so uh, you, you've... Uh, You've worked in different places across the industry and worked with lots of different people, as you mentioned. So I always like to ask, what's a really good piece of leadership advice? Either something that you've been given at some point in your career that's really stuck with you or something that maybe you use with your teams now? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. And I had to pause to think about it uh, because I've been lucky and fortunate to have been given lots of leadership advice. Um, I don't know if it's because I needed it or uh, <laughs> just because I've been fortunate to work with, you know, extremely talented uh, leaders and, and just, you know, people uh, in the companies I've been in, uh, whether at P&G or Nestle or now at Bayer, we, we have a great leadership team and there's great advice um, coming from, from our team. And to be honest with you, um, there is one that I got early on uh, in my career that kind of stuck with me. And I tried to apply it and I tried to share the wisdom, but it's it's really that hope is not a strategy. So, and it's A.G. Laffley that said that like many moons ago, um, but it kind of stuck with me because, you know, you know how people say sometimes, yeah, let's hope this will turn out to be good or let's hope we'll win this or, you know, it's good, but not good enough. <laughs> you know, it's like you need to have a plan. You need to prepare for it. You need to line up the right people. And you need to have a strategy uh, on what to focus, what not to focus on. And, and hopefully that way you can win. So that kind of stuck with me. 
Good. I love that. I love that. That's a classic. Uh, good. Right. Outside of media, mm. I should point out as well, Sam, that Stan sport, sporting his uh, Movember moustache. Thank you uh, for that. If any of you are doing that and raising money for charity, good on you. My son asked me whether I was growing a moustache and I said, you not, should. <laughs> not, very, not very well. Um, so outside of media, where would, where would we find you just when you tr just want to get away from the industry and yeah Do your own thing um so yeah thanks for pointing out the mustache some people say it looks good on me others think, like no like please um, but however it's for good cause so yeah. maybe we can post the link it's uh yeah, we'll and um and it's also um, the the dgr which is one of my passions actually it's the uh, distinguished gentleman's race i don't know if you're familiar with that it's, no, uh, tell us, please. well it's, it's it's a motorcycle riding group that didn't really identify with the typical um characteristics of uh motorbike riders with like you know some of those stereotypes that i don't want to call out on um but that yeah. you know kind of more like instead of bad boys like kind of the good gentleman motorcycle riders and there's a race every year and it's it's quite cool and they also support um movember so uh, it's a double cause uh, two in one um so that's one thing like i ride my my bike and then uh i'm quite you know it's gonna sound like a very uh media nerdy but i do enjoy uh consuming lots of media myself so mm -hmm. it's part of the job but it's also a passion of mine whether still magazines you know i still buy and read magazines yep. um uh, in general like you know netflix and all kinds of uh, of series but uh, i also get like really into some you know innovative um digital uh whatever grabs my attention when it's new I'm, I'm really curious also to find out like uh what will be the next big trend so i think one passion i would say in summary is identifying trends in general yeah yeah I quite love that stay hungry yeah i didn't know you rode a bike so that's good i've, I've learned something too as well today we'll talk about that another time i'm sure um so final question so we talked about some of the challenges and particularly some of the some of the kind of measurement challenges and accountability challenges in media but hopes for the year ahead so there's a lot going on at the moment obviously in in media and economy and worldwide um but a year from now where would you like the industry to have moved to hmm. i think it's a tough question because we know there's a bit of economic turmoil to say the least um and as i mentioned i think media is getting more fragmented more complex overall but but still um i mean i think there is hope also in uh when i work with the wfa um, teams and uh, working with my peers um that we're really like becoming a a strategic function you know when i look back to how media was maybe like 15 years ago um i see that you know media is taking more and more importance in um, the way uh, businesses want to to grow and it's really a, a factor of, of growth and yeah. uh i think we've talked about that and you've talked about that quite a lot on the show but at the same time also with with peers what we talk about and and, and i have to mention this is what we can do as an industry to do media for good and, and I'm quite excited with the momentum behind this uh, this initiative and the number of, number of people who really want to do something about uh, reducing the carbon footprint in the entire uh, media ecosystem, uh, starting with small but meaningful actions and collective actions like the bigger ones. Uh, that gives me a lot of hope, actually. There's a lot of momentum behind this. And uh, I think a year from now, we'll have made uh, tangible progress on that front. Oh, good. I love that. I love that. And I, I, it's, it's a sentiment definitely, I think, shared across a lot of your peers, um, something that we want to focus on for the year ahead. Sami Roof, Global Media Director of Bayer, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot, Tom. Appreciate it.
Who would you like to meet on future episodes? Please let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to the Media Snack channel, where you will also find previous guests, including leading marketing executives from companies like P&G, Uber, LVMH, Mars, IKEA, and many more. Plus, some of the industry's most provocative thought leaders, such as Belinda Smith, Sir Martin Sorrell, Wendy Clark, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Professor Mark Ritson. You can also get alerts to hear about upcoming new guests. If you liked this episode and think someone else would, then please share it. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.